churches. All throughout Christian history, you're going to see two churches. Whenever persecution breaks out, there's always two churches. You know that there's always a church that is allowed to remain in a culture, unmolested? And then there's another church, known as the Confessing Church. Some of us know it as the Underground Church. In China, it's known as the House Church Movement. So we have something known as the Three Self Church in China and the Chinese House Church. One is authorized by the government. It is actually supported by the government. And then you have this House Church Movement. A lot of their pastors are currently in prison, suffering. Uh, many of them have been killed. So the House Church Movement in China would say, it's not that the three self Christians are not Christians. They say that they are caged Christians. It's like a bird in a cage as opposed to a free bird. A bird in a cage will not and cannot reproduce. So in one generation, those birds will be dead and they will have no lineage. It's only the free birds that reproduce. The church that exists in order to subsist can only survive one more generation. If we make decisions to just try and survive, which is what the three self church is doing. Hey guys, this is the best we can do. At least they're giving us a little leash to, to be Christians. If you only exist to survive, the church will be dead in one generation. It's been proven throughout history. The church that kowtows to this mentality is a dead church because it cannot reproduce. And what you see is that exact thing. This three self church is declining. It has no life because it can't speak of its faith. It can't reproduce itself. It's a bird in a cage. And then there is the house church movement, which refuses to be caged. It refuses to keep its tongue locked inside of its mouth and silent. It must speak. Which one are we here? Because we don't have to divide between legal and illegal. However, we do know that there is correct and there is incorrect in our culture. There are always two. The church that just tries to survive and the church that defies and as a result, thrives. Isn't that a funny thought? It's the church that defies such restraint upon its confession that actually thrives. That is like the fertilizer to our soul when we stand up and we believe Jesus over any governmental law. You see, I will submit to the government. As a basic premise of my Christianity, I honor the authority that is God-given. However, if that God-given authority asks me to contradict the God authority in my life known as the Word of God, I will say no. No matter the cost. There are always two, the church that goes silent, and the church that confesses. The only real church is the church that does something. When you reach the Goliath, when you reach the challenge, when you reach that which defies the church and asks us to compromise, there's a road to silence and there's a road of confession where you must pick up five smooth stones and respond. You cannot sit down and be passive. You have been commissioned to speak the truth, to live the truth, to confess the truth. Confession is not just a use of the tongue, it's a use of the life. To say, I will walk the narrow way. So here's our two words that make up confession in the Greek. Homologeo is the word. Homa, it means in perfect agreement or in stride. Like, similar. And so I use the illustration of a mirror. If I moved, the image in the mirror would move. It would be in direct relationship with the movements. And that's exactly what this word means. So, Hama and Logos. That is the name for Jesus Christ, ironically. It's the Word of God. Jesus is the Logos. He is the Word. And so what we have is we have similar and in stride with the Word. So confession, the Greek idea in the Bible is when the Bible moves, or the Word of God moves, or Jesus moves this way, we match His stride. We walk where He walks. If He goes this way, we go this way. If He jumps, we jump. We are in perfect agreement, and that is the idea of confession. So if you are the confessing church, you are in agreement with Jesus. There's always two churches. 
Which one are we? Are we the ones that are willing to boldly represent the truth of Jesus Christ? Do you know that it's unfashionable in Christianity today to believe that the Bible is in fact the Word of God? Do you know that it's unfashionable in Christianity today? In Christianity, not just in the world, in Christianity to believe that Jesus is in fact God. Do you know that it's unfashionable in Christianity today to believe that Jesus is the only way? church. So my resolve is we first say to God, we're willing to do whatever you ask us to do. By life or by death, we must confess. If we be anything, we must be a praying and a confessing church. I don't want us to esteem praying, and I don't want us to esteem confessing. I want us to pray, and I want us to confess. I am tired of exhorting the church of Jesus Christ to get on their knees and pray. And then we all say how important it is. And we all agree. We all pat each other on the back and say, I agree with you, dear brother. Your theology on prayer is wonderful. We must pray. But we also must confess. We must do. It is hard in this generation to do. And we all esteem it, I know. But to do is hard. I recognize the challenges we face. But we've been built to do something about it. What a crime it is to think that we have the truth of the King of Kings. We have had eyes to see it and do nothing with it in a time when it is most desperately needed. When you come to a crossroads and you need to choose this way or this way, there is a complication that stands in our midst. We call it a Goliath. Goliath is boasting. He is mocking the church of Jesus Christ. You need to make a decision. One direction is silence. The other is to actually stand up to it. Which one seems the most reasonable? In America, we have been trained and groomed to be silent. Every single one of us is at the same juncture. You know the truth at this very hour, one of the most critical moments maybe in all of Christian history is before us. And you are the age you are with a voice with a body, with energy to do something about it. Are you ready to pick up five smooth stones and do something? There's always two churches. Which church are you in?